All right, so we're going to try and do lecture video um, over module 15 for balance. Um, or wait, this is 16, module 16 for balance. So I have had to re record things all day today. I'm stuck in my bathroom because everybody else has stuff going on and I don't want them interrupting this. So um, hopefully this one works. I, I have not had the best luck. So anyways, let's go ahead and switch over and go over balance. Um, so I'm going to go back to the beginning here um, because I had gotten to the end and realized somehow it wasn't recording. So let's get back here. Um, so one back. Okay. The key to balance is um, balance is just your body's ability to keep your top half in line with your bottom half. Okay. Um, the technical way is to maintain center. Of, technical way to say that is center of mass over base of support. But really, it's your body's ability to keep your top half above your lower half. If your top half gets too far out of alignment with your lower half, you're going to fall. Okay. Um, and so falls are one of the biggest, most expensive problems in the United States. They are one of the problems that you will treat the most as a PTA. Um, and restoring balance is the best way to keep people from falling, right? So balance is this mix of three different systems that help us keep our balance. Our visual system, um, our eyes tell us where we are. Our eyes tell us how to keep our body um, in proper alignment, right? And so if you take away that visual system, sometimes people will have a hard time um, maintaining balance. So our eyes play a part. Our vestibular system, this is those crystals inside our ear that tell our head basically where it is and how fast it's moving, right? And if those crystals get out of alignment or there's something quite wrong or not right with the brain and how it's connecting with the vestibular system, then you can see some problems here. And finally, the somatosensory, somatosensory system is um, just your body's ability to know where it is in space. So if you close your eyes right now and try and reach out and touch your nose, you'll be able to touch your nose without even thinking about it. And that's weird. If you like really think about that, it's kind of weird that we just know where our bodies are. We have this system inside us that tells us how, what body part we're moving and where those body parts are in space. You could take your hands, put them out in front of you and put your fingers together and have them touch. And you could probably do it the first time with no problem or at least pretty close because our bodies just know. And the problem is, is at any point, one of these systems can get damaged or just not working properly and you start to lose your balance. Um, as you get older, your vision gets worse your hearing and your vestibular system can become affected and your somatosensory system just doesn't work as well. Um, or you can have outside things like alcohol affect your somatosensory system. So alcohol can change these, drugs can change these, age can change some of these things. And so um, what we're going to learn here is how to work with people to restore balance once it's been damaged. You'll see this a lot in people with like um, uh, strokes, CVAs, head injury, um, spinal cord injuries, or just with age at times where they're not using their body as much and they maybe they're just sitting too much and they kind of forget how to stand and how to move. Um, so anyways, postural sway, moving on now, postural sway is just um, your normal um well, every, as, you, as your balance gets worse, you start to have postural sway, right? And if you watch somebody who doesn't have good balance, even as they're standing there, they're kind of moving around, especially if you watch somebody who's really drunk, they just cannot stay still. This happens not just with alcohol, but as we get older as well. So postural sway is just this movement as somebody tries to keep their balance. 
Um, you can create that by pushing somebody a little bit and they will kind of sway to correct to get things back in balance or you'll just see it naturally. So there is um, this cone of stability here. What that means is this is how much you can sway depending on the person before you fall over. Some people have a bigger cone of stability. Other people have a smaller cone of stability. And one of the things we're trying to do in PT is increase this cone of stability and teach a patient how to increase their cone of, cone of stability. So let's move on and look at some different ways to do that. So there are different strategies we naturally do to keep our balance. There's the ankle strategy, which is just as you stand there, you kind of move at your ankles to kind of readjust. Um, so you'll see this in anybody on any day in any situation where they're just kind of moving their ankles. And you can see that here. This person's kind of just going back and forth, but all the movement is at the ankles and any loss of balance is corrected by just moving the body at the ankles. Then there's the hip strategy where um, this is a response to a bigger loss of balance or a bigger disruption to your balance by somebody pushing you or something like that, or you just not being able to maintain your balance. And that's called a hip strategy. See how this person is now not just moving at the hips, although there is some movement at the hips, but they're moving at the, I mean, at the ankle, sorry, but now they're also moving at the hips as well. And so that's when you know that you've moved to a higher level of challenge to balance. So um, then you've moved into that hip strategy. So you see this in people's trying to stand on a balance beam, somebody trying to walk on, in a small area, or if somebody really pushes you or you really start to lose your balance, you'll move at the hips. And then the final strategy is a stepping strategy. So as I said, um, maintaining your balance is just about keeping your top half over your lower half. And if you're you're about to if your top half is about to fall, your natural response is to step because then you've made your bottom half bigger, right? You've increased your base of support, and that's going to prevent you from falling. So this is one of the things, and if you can even see here, this is an exercise that you can do with somebody to have them practice stepping in different directions as you push them um, in different directions so that they get in the habit of stepping to protect themselves. Um, sometimes people weirdly get out of that habit and we can retrain their body to get back into that habit of stepping when they feel like they're about to fall. Um, so coordination is just our ability to kind of do these things together it has a lot to do with our somatosensory system um, know where we are in space and ability to move in ways that aren't going to make us lose our balance coordinating of coordination of movements together so precautions just know that anytime you work with somebody there's a risk of them falling right um, especially with balance activities so make sure you have that gate belt you have a hand in that gate belt because you're specifically doing things to challenge their balance and the risk of fall falls will actually get higher as you're working with them. And so always, always, always make sure that um, the patient has a gate belt on and that you're standing very close to them. Don't do balance activities where you have to step away from them with just you. Make sure somebody else is there with you. This is where it's good to have either an aid or do a co-treatment with an occupational therapist of some sort. Contraindications, don't do balance activities with people that can't safely stand up. Don't do sitting balance activities with people, somebody who can't safely sit up. Don't do balance activities with somebody who lacks the cognitive ability to know what is safe and isn't. If they're not going to be able to learn this, or if they're not at this point going to be able to understand how to keep themselves safe. You don't want to put them in, in more danger than they already are. So um, this is just going over those um, systems again, but a little more in depth. I'm not going to go over that. So um, treatment for balance impairments, there is um, kind of a progression of things we can do. You start people in static. Static just means they're standing without movement. Right. And so you can even within that, though, you can change their posture so you can have them standing at first with their feet wide apart. 
then you can have them move their feet together. Then you can have them move their feet to where they're standing toe to um, heel to toe. And, and so their base of support has gotten um, smaller. Then you can start adding, um, changing the support surface, what they're standing on. Or like if they're also standing and touching bars at the side, so they're in the parallel bars or they're holding on to the wall or something, have them not have that support. If they're standing on the ground, you can have them stand on a foam um, mat. They're called balance mats. Um, so you can have them stand on that. You can give them something that makes their top half heavier, right? So sure, you can stand up now, but what if I give you these five pound weights to hold in each hand? Will that, you know, and so these are just ways to take what they can already do and make it a little bit harder as you progress them. So the next step is ironically called dynamic balance, which means they're doing activities while, that, while they're trying to maintain their balance. So you can put them on surfaces that move, support surfaces that move. So these are balance boards that actually truly move. Um, BOSU balls, if you guys have looked at the BOSU balls, um, that's a good example. Um, we'll look further, um, but therapy balls, the, the big, uh, like yoga balls, um, you can have them sit on those or, um, the, so there's lots of different options and I'll show you some of those. I'm going to do a video over this treatment, um, moving their head, trunk, arms, or legs while they're doing things. So have them start trying to like actively, moving their body, doing functional activities, um, and then moving transitional and locomotor activities. This is walking, actually moving. Walking is a dynamic balance activity, a high level dynamic balance activity. So having people walk around a room or walk around certain objects, do a, a slight obstacle course or something like that, walking on different surfaces, um, uneven surfaces versus um, so walking in grass or walking on a sidewalk, um, those kind of things. And so these are different ways that you can get somebody progressing from this static into this dynamic stage. And even in the dynamic stage, you can like make it harder and harder by changing what they're doing. Anticipatory, um, this is where they have to respond to the situation instead of knowing exactly what's coming. Because with dynamic, you're telling them exactly what movements they're gonna do, and their brain knows before they do it what's gonna happen. Anticipatory is where you're throwing things at their body and their brain that they don't know what's gonna come. So having them reach for different things that, and so like you would hold up like a cone and reach for this, and you keep moving, and they have to move without really kind of thinking about it, catching get them to where they can catch because they can't prepare ahead of time for where it's going to go. Another great activity is hitting a balloon, man, because it really challenges them and you never know what, where a balloon's going to go. And so they have to make these adjustments constantly that make um, balance harder, but will improve. So if we start here at static and move them to where they're hitting a balloon, we know we've progress them to where their balance is getting better. Have them try and kick things. Kicking is extra hard because not only are they moving their body, but they have to stand on one leg and that base of support is really small for just a little bit, right? And so this is an even harder thing than catching. And then lifting, right? So picking up and lifting things and then an obstacle course where they're having to go around and adjust as they go is, is another good activity. Reactive, um, this is where you're kind of pushing somebody, right? So going back to ankle strategy, hip strategy, stepping strategy, you're pushing somebody and they're having to react um, to keep their balance. And so the harder you push them, the more they're gonna move from an ankle strategy to a hip strategy to a stepping strategy. So that's actually a good way to help people because one of the reasons people get fall have falls is because they bump into a wall somebody bumps into them and they're just not used to reacting properly anymore so you teach them through practice how to react use your ankles use your hips use a step if you need to and then sensory organization um 
if you know that the problem is somatosensory, um, you can reduce visual inputs, right? So maybe turn down the lights a little bit to where they can't see quite as good where they are and see if they can keep that proper posture, keep that center of mass over the base of support. Or you can even have them completely close their eyes, right? And then see if they're able to keep their balance. If they're not, you know it's a somatosensory problem where they don't know where their body is in space. And without that visual cue to tell them, hey, I'm not standing up straight, their brain just doesn't know. And so that's a good thing to practice with them is, okay, let's close your eyes. Now I want you to try and keep in a certain distance. You could even put your hands like out to the side of them and have them go, I don't want you to touch my hands. As soon as you touch my hands, you've gone too far so that they start to get a sense again of where their body is in space. Um, and then finally, functional activities. Have them go out, do day-to-day -day stuff, go to a grocery store, or pretend like they're putting away dishes at home, or pretend like they're cooking a meal or things like that, where they're having to do multiple tasks at once, where they're bending and lifting and twisting and reaching and, and walking, where you're going to get a good sense of this person can do day-to-day -day stuff, right? And they're ready to go um, home or they're ready to be safe. And then just make sure um, that you work with them on safety during gait, walking, um, and things like that, because that's the ultimate goal, right? You want to challenge them to go in normal situations and walk around and make sure that they're safe to go in either into their home or into the store or where, wherever and walk around and be safe, okay? So those are um, just different activities that you can do. And there, here are some progressions that we'll go through real quick. I know this is a little bit longer video. So um, if somebody ha doesn't have good balance, start them in sitting, work on getting that trunk strong, and I'll even go over sitting a little bit more because sitting, it's not just sitting even has its own balance progression. Um, then you can go to a half kneel. This a half kneel is where they're kneeling on their knees, but their butt is still kind of touching their feet too, if that makes sense. And then you can go to a tall kneel. A tall kneel is where they're on their knees, but their butt is no longer touching their legs. They're almost in a full stand, but just on their knees instead of on their feet, and then move them to standing, right? So this is a progression of balance that you can work on. Sitting, half kneel, tall kneel, standing. Uh, partial weight bearing, if they've had an injury, um, then move them to full weight bearing, then move them to full weight bearing, but where you're adding additional weight, like I talked about, to kind of really challenge their strength and their overall balance. If they have an assistive device or they need an assistive, assistive device, start them off with like a walker and then move them to where you're taking the walker away and see if they're able to still do the same activities. Build them up to where they don't need that assistive device. And if they've got good balance without a, this, an assistive device, they're going to reduce their risk of a fall, right? Start them out with a wide base of support to begin with. If they're really struggling, have them spread their feet apart, either forwards or to side to side, wider, it makes it easier to stand. But as they get better, figure out ways to make that base of support even more narrow. So bring their feet closer together, then bring their feet directly together, then have them put their feet um, heel to toe to where they're standing just in a very small line, that's even smaller, and then finally have them stand on just one foot wide base of support to narrower and narrower base of support. Bilateral, double limb support where they're standing on both legs to unilateral or single limb support, right? Where they're standing on just one foot, like I talked about. Eyes open, okay, if they can stand with their eyes open, but you know they have somatosensory problems, have them close their eyes and have them start trying to do things with their eyes closed. Touch their nose with their eyes closed. Clap with their eyes closed. Um, like touch the top of their head or touch their ears or whatever to where you're um, challenging their balance and trying to restore that somatosensory system, right? Um, even surfaces to uneven surfaces, I already talked about that. Stable surfaces to unstable surfaces, have them stand on the ground, have them start standing on a foam mat or a wobble board or a BAPS board or a um, BOSU ball, okay? 
um, small limb movement, have them start doing small actions really close to their body to large limb movement, bigger reaching PNF patterns, trying to hit a balloon that's further away from them. Maybe you start with a balloon that's really close to them, so where you're hitting it just really close to them and they, they don't have to reach very far to now I'm going to step back. I'm going to hit this balloon further away from you and you have to really reach now to progress them as they get better. Um, small little pushes, perturbations are just pushing somebody to large perturbations, right? If I gently push you, can you keep your balance to now I'm going to really push you hard because you've gotten better. Obviously, there are steps in between. You can kind of medium push. Um, uniplanar actions, have them do just simple straight movements, just reach up, just um, flex your shoulder to now I want you to do PNF patterns or I want you to reach over to this side of you and then reach up at an angle and put um, this cone on a shelf or something. And then finally, slow to fast, have them do slow movements to now I want you to do it quickly and I want you to do it fast because the faster you do it, the harder it is for the brain and the body to adjust, right? So these are all ways that you can take, um, and you can do these in combinations, but you can take something that's really simple and make it just a little bit harder each time to make their balance get better, right? Balance is weird because lots of times it's just like our muscles. If, they ha if we haven't been using our balance in these three systems, your visual, your vestibular, your somatosensory systems enough, they start to not work as well. And so the more we challenge them, the more they kind of wake up and turn back on and get better again. Um, or if they've been damaged by like a CVA or something, the more you use them, the more the brain kind of remembers and recovers that ability. So just going to walk through some progression examples. So this is a sitting progression example. This guy is sitting and he's got one foot, but look at the base of support that he's got. He's got a some support here. He's got support with his arms, right? And so he's got a lot of support and obviously along his butt where he's sitting. Now, if I take his hands away, I've progressed him. I've taken an, a, an activity that maybe was hard at one point, but got easy and I've made it harder now. So I've taken his hands away but his hands are still really close to him, right? So, but he doesn't have that extra support. And then finally, I could put him on a ball and that's going to make it even harder because now I've taken the support from his butt away because he's constantly having to adjust here because this ball doesn't hold still like a chair does, right? Some standing balance, right? So this guy's standing on one leg, but he's got his arms close. I could then take away that stable surface and change the surface underneath him to a balanced disc that's just a rubber disc with some air in it that makes him constantly have to shift his weight. And then I could further, this is a that foam mat that I was talking about. This is a balance mat, have him stand on that, but I make him put his arms out wide. And all of a sudden I've changed that um, center of mass and made it bigger and harder to maintain over a small base of support, right? And then finally, um, another example is, is you can have somebody standing with their arms wide and feet together. So this is a big center of mass over a pretty small base of support because his feet are in line with each other or in tandem is that what that's called sometimes. And then have him start trying to step so he's adding some big dynamic movements while still keeping that narrow base of support. And finally, a very high level activity would be have him stand on a small base of support while he's throwing a ball that's a weighted ball. So I'm adding that external force that we talked about. I'm adding dynamic activities and I'm making it a very small base of support. If somebody gets to where they can do this, the chances of them falling doing just a normal day to day activity are actually really low. The only thing I would point out is this person should have somebody with them and a gate belt on this guy. Don't ever do this just without somebody right there with them. Um, here's some good balance activities that you can look at and go over. If you have any questions over any of this, please let me know. But I think that's everything. Let me look here.